Navahoro, Shamahoho, and others. They didn't sound big. Shamahoho, Navahoro. Uh -huh. But very small. But very small. With very, people with very big hearts. Very big hearts. Yes. That's the thing. But now I'm back to the city. Uh -huh. uh, I had a chance to observe what is happening politically. Yes. So as you travel around the country, you find small groups of people. Uh -huh. As the more they are waiting for, uh -huh. they are waiting for politicians. They're waiting for politicians. <laughs> and not empty hearted. So they told not me. Em not empty hearted. So they told me. Uh, and I'm looking forward to the day Kenyans will be given something by politicians. They say we don't want. Until we reach that stage, mm. then you're going to have people with money influencing the way we vote. Mm -hmm. And that's not good for democracy. Mm -hmm. But I'm waiting for the next few days we vote. Yes. I'll definitely vote. Mm -hmm. At least I know who to vote against. I'm not sure who I will vote for. Mm -hmm. Then we go on the drive, as my colleagues have pointed out. Okay. <laughs> the, sun, the sun will still rise from the east. The sun will still rise from the east. Indeed, nothing will change. But uh, looking at this particular headline here, and uh, we're just talking about it, propriety, mm -hmm. uh, how will you chime in now that we have Gashagwa as well, uh, his candidacy just being put um, on the spotlight as it is, the court made pr their pronouncement, as I've mentioned, uh, that 200 million shillings he cannot really account for has to be uh, taken back from where it was sourced from. And uh, we have the activists. So people will read politics into this, even if it's very genuine. Why now? Only four days to go. Uh, is this a providential time to actually be uh, yeah, activating such uh, petitions in court? Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's interesting. When I saw this headline, I saw, I first of all saw it circulating on the net. Yes. That some people have petitioned to have Rashagua and a few other guys stop from participating in the polls. Yes. And the first that came in my mind is the timing. Mm -hmm. It's uh, this is like a torpedo. Yes. You are fighting one, you, you torpedo a, a, a ship. Mm -hmm. It's going to sink. So if this goes through, mm -hmm. it is going to do maximum damage to these politicians yes. and their parties. Mm -hmm. And uh, my question is, why now? Why now? Yes. But remember the headline playing dirty? Playing dirty. This yes. could be part of playing dirty, mm -hmm. but from the regular front. Because mm -hmm. I would ask, where have these all, where have these guys been all the time? Now they are fighting. And, and I saw it is a certificate of urgency. Mm -hmm. So it is something that must be addressed now. Mm -hmm. But towards the end of this political game, I think any trick will work. Mm -hmm. Any trick will work. Whether it is work, whether it is going online, whether it is circulating fake videos, it will work. Yeah, but it, it should magic. work. It should work within morality and within our roles. Mm -hmm. Within morality and uh, within our laws. Yes. Yes, and we've seen. Uh, how then will you say the deep fake uh, is working with it, morality and within our laws? We saw <laughs> some deep fake videos trying to create some <laughs> very, uh, very contentious narrative and very I, I, dangerous I, I narrative. I don't think that is within law. I don't think that is within morality. Mm -hmm. People should be truthful because once we vote on Tuesday, this country will still be there. Mm -hmm. Life will still be go gone. Mm -hmm. So let's not incite people, let's not annoy people because you still need them after ninth. Yes. After all, who thought one day President Uhuru and uh, former Prime Minister would have a hard shake? Mm -hmm. Maybe these guys talking against one another yes. may need a hard shake in the future. Mm -hmm. So let them be moderate. Mm -hmm. Indeed. All right, uh, that will be the biggest question, and uh, this has been mm -hmm. a struggle for all the agencies as I had raised that question with you, uh, Gituro Wanaina. Impropriety, integrity, uh, mm -hmm. Maybe as we're going to the next phase of um, and the tenor of all the leadership, sure. we should go back and relook at the question of uh, leadership and integrity briefly. You're right. You're right. Because I, I, it I, has I, really come to the center stage in this particular yeah, election. Mm -hmm. yeah. But uh, we seem to be tied uh, with the law as it is right now. There's nothing mm -hmm. much we can do. The law and and uh, the, the right to to associate, the right for you to be pronounced innocent until the verdict guilty has been stamped on you. I think it's too late in the day, and, and uh, I'm not sure whether our text then is saying Kenyans really vote on levels whether somebody is mentioned or not. Uh, and I don't think anybody is going to change mm -hmm. their vote that uh, whatever Ashagu and the team yes. has been talked about. But I hope this is, and I think uh, Dominic was right, spot on, I w hope this can be voted on integrity. And I was sharing, uh, we had a, a, chat, uh, a chat with the Engineer Mongera. Those perhaps know Engineer Mongera uh, know what he went through mm -hmm. through the Moi regime. And very, very strong coming. How can we? And I think it should be faced in terms of winning b by integrity, mm -hmm. which is something we really have to address. Mm -hmm. And I see uh, it depends uh, that if Azimio comes into power. Mm -hmm. 
then they have a re bigger responsibility convincing Kenyans that uh, we are not a project. Mm -hmm. I think that's something they have to convince that we are in charge here, we have a business to do. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think they can. Uh, if Kwanzaa comes in, I think they have a whole ball game ahead of them, an opportunity to demonstrate that, yes, we are not as tainted. Uh, and therefore, when you see this, there are things we have perception, mm -hmm. whether true or not, and they play out uh, in terms of the decisions we make. But I, I think uh, it's important for us to really the, even the, the, the poll, and we'll probably discuss down there. Yeah, road. we will discuss the poll. Yes. Yeah. Why is the majority voting? Where are they? And they really, when you look at this headline or whatever, do they really care? The, the, in the last mile, the very just. Do they really care in what sense? In the sense that, is this going to change their voting, mm -hmm. what they want to vote for? Uh, and, and I highly doubt. It's probably you and I, in most cases, we don't go to vote. Mm -hmm. So I, I think even going to court is, is too late. Let the mm -hmm. guy go there, yeah, let's we make that decision. And uh, as the lucky has appointed a light free, uh, Kenya will be there after, after Tuesday. Mm -hmm. And what we, most of us want is, Let's get away with it and let's do business. Let's move on. Mm -hmm. Let's do what we are good at. And that is really looking at our families. That is doing economy. And that is being resilient as Kenyans have been. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So I think it's uh, G.K. Chesterton who said that we, we go to war. or well, The soldiers really go to war, not because of the enemy that is in front of them, but because of the people that... They love indeed who are behind them as well so even as we go into this general election it's not because about it's about really the leaders that we want to elect but it's because of the people that we love that are behind us sure. our children uh you know our elderly parents uh, our cousins our brothers our sisters it is for the sake of the peace and of course the country right so when we talk about the king and country this is it at the end of the day right let's just move on and see what we have in other dailies as it is right now and uh, we have also the People Daily. We have, uh, we have also the Star as well. I'm just trying to model that for you. But this is what is on the front page of uh, the Star. Let me try and pick up uh, the latest one. I think I'm getting uh, the oldest one here. And as, as mentioned also earlier, that uh, we're expecting Bilokero to join us as well. And the biggest question uh, we're asking this morning is, is the next government ready to handle the recession that is upcoming, right? We don't want to be the prophets of gloom and doom, but that's the reality well over that there is a big recession that is coming that is going to affect the entire world. And that is bound to affect you, it's bound to affect me in terms of cash in our pockets. Even the shrinkflation that we've seen, as far as packaging is concerned, people now are really going with the Kadogo economy that is going to affect everyone. Mm -hmm. So are you ready uh, for this uh, <laughs> high recession that is coming that has not treated the world, the world actually since 2008 when we had the financial um, shakedown all the way from the Lehman's brothers and had the meltdown that was there uh, from the US, right? This is what is on the front page of the People Daily this morning. Even as we're heading towards a general election, this man is on the spot, Chebukati right it is his time to swing to sink or swim hot seat ivc bulls has changed the way he operates as clock ticks towards tuesday polls will his new strategy work this time this story is well fleshed out for you on page four of the star this morning and even as uh, we are talking about elections there are four million kenyans who are facing the risk of acute hunger Acute hunger, that is the operative word, acute. And this is the story that is well fleshed out for you on page four of the People Daily today. A lavish lifestyle man who led double annual life has been caught finally. Who is this? This is, uh, we can see Dixon Masharia. Um, Elias Diko was a ringleader of Confirm Gang, which has been killing and stealing people in Akuru here. He's being led to Central Police Station by County Commander Peter Mwanzo after his arrest. Right, this is Dixon Masharia. There. Finally, Siku Zamuizi near Rubaini. Right, let, let's just uh, talk about Chebukati and uh, IBC. 
questions that have been coming to, to bear and him reassuring also the media, uh, reassuring all the stakeholders that we are election ready. We have all our ducks in a row right now. We have all the system, uh, you know, they stand at the ready. We are good to go. Maybe a pertinent question for each of you from mm -hmm. uh, Professor Dominic Moenges' <laughs> perspective. Deep down in your heart, your hunch, what is IBC telling you? Or what are you feeling? With all honesty. <laughs> <laughs> I've never known him not to be honest. <laughs> you know, is he doubting or something like that? You, know, you can be honest, but you can feel the worst also with the, because you're very cautious at the end of the day as well. Yes. But you can let it all hang out. No, well, I, mean, I mean, for me, uh, Chebukat is on the spot right now because mm -hmm. he, he is the person everybody is looking up to to make yes. sure this election is carried out. Mm -hmm. uh, however, there, there are so many things that have happened mm -hmm. uh, along the way uh, from uh, funny individuals coming from some third world country somewhere in, in South America uh, to now uh, ghosts. Uh, I don't know whether you've seen the one they're talking about, the ghosts. Uh, the, the, the ghost returning officers in the, that are not gazetted. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Uh, so yeah. there, there are so many questions. We, we should look at that as well. Uh -huh. There are so many questions that will get you to, to, to read a question. Uh, Chebukati, what are you up to? Mm. Uh, and if you look at the saga of the Venezuelans, uh, which, which one for me didn't make any sense, uh, and the spat between, here, between IBC and... Uh, and the police who are really doing doing their job, mm. uh, it, it, it sometimes uh, and sometimes people make honest but foolish mistakes. Mm -hmm. uh, but there are some mistakes that are not necessarily foolish. Yes. Uh, so there, there, there's a lot of question as to whether this guy really uh, is, is 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 as transparent as we would mm -hmm. like to think that he is. But uh, nevertheless, he has assured us that uh, uh, the elections will be fair. Uh, we also know the history of, uh, of, of this country. Uh, and, uh, you know, when you talk about morals and, and all that, uh, I think in this country we have a deficit of morality in so many things when it comes to our politics. Uh, and uh, it, it is our hope that uh, they will run the elections uh, in a transparent uh, and uh, do it in a very objective way with no games in the background. Mm. Uh, that is our hope, that those Kenyans who wake up very early in the morning, I'll be voting in Kiambu in Lari, mm -hmm. uh, and I'll be leaving Nairobi uh, around 4 in the morning so that I can be in, uh, in the queue as early as, uh, as 5.30. Mm -hmm. uh, the last thing I want is uh, for me and uh, my, my relatives and friends and everybody who is waking up very early in the morning, Yes. Uh, to have someone in the background trying to uh, invalidate my vote mm -hmm. or trying to manipulate that vote to go in a certain direction. Uh, so it's our hope that uh, what they're promising uh, is actually true and factual. Mm -hmm. uh, but sometimes I tend to have my doubt. Uh, and because of some of the public pronouncements they make or some of the stupid things that we have seen happen, uh, uh, within with IBC and the things that actually do not make any any sense. I'm still here to figure out and for them to tell me uh, where those rolls of of uh, stickers uh, will be going. Uh, I still don't have an answer, mm. uh, and I think most of us have been reading the dailies and and looking uh, to know what they were meant for. Uh, so th those are questions that are fundamental to the fairness. Uh, of, uh, of the election and whether it is really going to be a transparent, but we are hopeful that it's going to be transparent. Mm -hmm. We are hopeful that they are ready, uh, but uh, we also hope that security agencies are also looking to make sure that uh, there is safety. Uh, we are also hopeful that uh, those who are involved in the, in the elections uh, will actually make sure it is fair and there is no <laughs> manipulation of the same. What I'm not quite sure yet uh, is um, what happened to, and, and I'm hopeful also we are going to have the, the Mayo register uh, at the polling poll, uh, uh, polling station, 
so that when I go there and I have worked a little bit harder the last five years and my, my fingerprints are not working well, uh, they can go and uh, verify that's me on, a, uh, on, a, on, the, on the manual register. Uh, so those things do happen. And, and, and I can tell you a good example in the U.S. when the, the elections come. Uh, there, there is always an attempt to suppress uh, voter turnout, especially in black community and minority communities, uh, by having dirty tricks from everybody. Uh, for example, some of them tell you, telling you if you have a criminal record and you're coming to vote, or you have an outstanding warrant, really? you're coming to vote, we'll get you the voting, uh, the, 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 the polling station. So all those things are there. We could use the absence of the manual register also to disenfranchise a lot of people. So we have to make sure that uh, those things do happen. Uh, and, and you know as well as I do, any time you do things electronically, anything is possible. Because <laughs> yeah. it takes the, the click of a button uh, to do a lot of uh, bad things. So we are, we, we are hopeful that uh, Chebukati and the team are up to the task. Thank you. Uh, we are also hopeful that the government will be able to maintain uh, security uh, across the country. Right, even as we, uh, we there, there's a bigger question here, because you can see, let me try and zoom in there. Chebukati, the, we have the KPMG audit uh, saying that strangers got access to IBC voter register. Updated records. Uh, this is what is coming from KPMG. And this is all really some good news that we want to hear oh, right now. Even where they exp that, let me just flip over to page two so that we can read more details of that as well and uh, try and see what they're telling us. Strangers, it says here, access IBC voter register. Uh, mm -hmm. Agency denies claim. Right, says security to, of database has been strengthened. Unauthorized people, it says, let me zoom in for you, and uh, this is a story by Moses of the Amber from the Star. Unauthorized people accessed the voter register database of the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission. A new audit has revealed. The audit by KPMG says, their unauthorized users updated the voter register, raising concerns about whether the voters' role was manipulated. Quote, audit trails indicated that there were users who were not gazetted as returning officers or assistants, returning officers who made dates or made up, who made up dates to voter data. That is the KPMG uh, report which was reading. Additionally, the auditors said passwords or password setting in the application layer and database layer were inconsistent with the IBC policy. Father, Registration officers also had elevated privileges that allow them to affect transfers, change voter particulars, and the active deceased voters at the constituency level. With this, the auditor says, some of the users applied the privileges to irregularly transfer voters and change particulars. There is, let me call it there, there is a risk that users who are not authorized by law may process transfer, change particulars, or deactivate voters in the system. This is according to KPMG. And uh, the, audit also, the auditor said the KPMG audit identified 246,465 mm -hmm. dead voters in the, the register, more than 481,000 duplicate entries, 226,143 registered with wrong IDs, and 164,269 with unrecognized records. Well, we can read on and read on on that particular, but uh, we're looking at this revelation also, uh, KPMG was uh, the audit firm that was responsible with uh, trying to clean the, the that particular voter register with this particular revelation. What, what would you say? And we have the agency denying, mm. saying the security database has <laughs> been strengthened, yet you've, you've, you've consulted KPMG to do this work. So why would you refuse again if this is a revelation? Iraqi. I think you always, you always spare the hardest questions for me. <laughs> 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 I'll respond to them. I think this, it is unfortunate that you are talking about the integrity of IBC. Oh, four days to actually. This late. Yeah, this late. But, uh, even but the question is also, why is this report really coming this late in the day? Yeah. I mean, people have been asking uh, for this particular oh. voter register so that these things are cured yes. earlier. I think we should start by thanking IBC for accurately carrying out the audit. Because I think that was good practice. But, no, but might, even, might, I mean, that one is... They might have the done it right, but I think they did something. So the big question you should be asking, why are they giving us these results, this rate for a week, four days to the, to, the, to the pouring day? 
And, and the issue of integrity is not just about me and you, it's also about our institutions. Mm -hmm. Because traditionally Kenyans don't trust our institutions, whether it is IBC, whether mm -hmm. it is the government, whether it is other, we don't trust them. So when such a report comes to the media, people seem to believe it too much. Because we are used to not trusting institutions. But, but I think IBC, in my opinion, is ready to run the election this year. If you look at what they did in 2013, repeat polls successfully, I think they should be up to the task. And if you look at the person who heads it, uh, Mr. Shebukati, I have seen him one time in a golf course, and I know golfers can be trusted and have a lot of integrity. <laughs> so based on that, I can also check in the same newspaper, I can see adverts where I can go and check whether I'm registered. So I think they have done something to create trust in us. <laughs> but the problem with us is, no matter what but you do to Kenyans, <laughs> we, are, we are never satisfied. But the issue is access. We don't, we've always been talking about trust. How, I don't think how, how tight is your system? I don't think we, we cannot really have hackers we have trying seen to, to come and game the system. We have seen the revelation people here. hacking in military installations. So there's no system that is foolproof. And what IBC should do is to, to, uh, to, to make us believe and assure us that... But that is very few and far between. That the system when you talk about have. the military, when is the last time you heard about any military infiltration? Or I've, this is a, a I, I've seen that in Europe and other countries. But when is the last time you heard that? It's, it's not as common as for, yeah. others, for other small people like us. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I think that it's, what I'm trying to say is, mm. I think we need to trust the institutions that we have put into place. I think we have given IEBC the money to conduct elections, yes, yes. and we cannot start saying now that they are not able to for this direction. Yes. So what we need to do is to trust, to trust, to trust them. And if there are any weaknesses, they should rectify them. Mm -hmm. We should not throw away IBC and tell them, go home. Who is going to conduct the elections for us? Yes. So let's trust them. If there are any shortcomings, let them correct them in the next two, four days, and we go for, for the post. Because I feel concerned as a Kenyan, if, I, if somebody starts telling me now that, you know, you are voting, the voting you are going to, to cast on, on Tuesday is not legitimate. Mm -hmm. And if you notice, both sides of the political divide, whether you go to Azimio, whether you go to Kwanzaa, they are all talking about IEBC. So this mistrust, in my opinion, I see it as a part of the dirty games we are talking about. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. I want to welcome uh, Bill Okero. Good to see you. As always, Bill Okero, make sure that we are prayed for. Uh, <laughs> 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 so you have to come and take it. We will do respect that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Bilo, you should teach this man to pray early in the morning. I don't know how far <laughs> they are in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. They just wake up and yeah. rush to, to, to their washrooms to prepare themselves, you know. Uh, yeah. Every Kenyan is praying now. Oh, sure. Every Kenyan is praying right now. Tell you. I hope I'm you have done. noted uh, every government meeting and other public institution meeting, they all, they all start with a player, by the way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, Bilo, we were actually looking at the star and uh, this, mm -hmm. how IBC is ready. And that particular strange uh, revelation that we're getting about the access to IBC voter register um, right now. Maybe looking how, and how you've been observing how ready they are, what would you say? No, I, I, I agree with what um, mm -hmm. uh, Prof just said. I, I think it's too late in the day to start um, raising issues. Uh, IBC, in my view, has, 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 has uh, done whatever... Um, is necessary. This is a, not a very easy country to conduct elections. Mm -hmm. um, you know, every step of the way you have challenges. Um, you want to do procurement, there are guys in court. You want to recruit people, there are people in court. Um, you want to approve the candidates, there are people in court. Even as we speak, there are people who have gone to court yesterday to challenge candidates. Mm -hmm. I mean, so it, it, it's a very difficult um, uh, task IBC has. But I think um, for the first time, I, I think this time, this year, I find them more reassuring, more reassuring. than even previous elections. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm telling you, yeah, they look more confident, uh, particularly regarding the technology that they are using. They seem to be very confident that this time we will not have any breakdown, and 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 so let's hope for the best. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's hope for the best. Yep. Thank you very much. And, uh, today, uh, as I mentioned, we were looking at uh, the recession and the upcoming recession, and how also Kenya is preparing for this recession though we have heard from central bank that they will not really change their tra trajectory of uh, the economic growth that is uh, projected to be at 5.9% if I'm not wrong. But well over, everyone is preparing for recession, sure. mm -hmm. right? And uh, that will be your biggest uh, topic uh, this morning. But just to get a snippet through that entry, what, what would you say? There is a concern globally uh, that the world's 
economies are going into recession. And we have seen that um, those sentiments from European Union, we have seen sentiments similarly expressed um, in the US. Um, the World Bank has um, scaled down their projection for the growth of the global economy, mm -hmm. um, you know, from what they had projected 5.9% mm -hmm. to almost mm -hmm. written it down to 2.9%, and they have raised concern that the world, you know, the, the economy, the global economy may be headed for, for, for recession. And this, I think, um, is not likely to get any better with the current tension again building up between the U.S. and China over Taiwan. Mm -hmm. Um, with the situation in the in the in the in the Ukraine and Russia still getting um, mm. you know no closer to no, no no closer to resolution, so I, I think yes I think we we, are, we must be concerned mm -hmm. that the economy is, uh, globally is not going to get any better, mm -hmm. um, and that um, uh, you know this um, uh, rosy picture our government <laughs> gives always about our economy mm -hmm. that you know it's going to uh, we are we are back to growth we are. Uh, the economy has, 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 has bounced back and we are going to... I think we need to be a bit uh, rational and, 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 and mm -hmm. really face the reality because we are in an interdependent world. We depend on exports. For example, I'll tell you from the uh, Ukraine war you've seen. Yes. They are not our major trading partners. Um, but still, if you look at the figures, there is going to be a significant, uh, there is already a significant impact, particularly the exports and imports from Russia, mm -hmm. which are uh, much higher than um, from Ukraine. And, 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 and so, and we, for example, the wheat prices, you've seen things, these grains. Um, Kenya exports uh, almost um, uh, two thirds of its, uh, its, its wheat from Russia. Mm -hmm. And um, about another, I think, uh, 15 to 20 percent from Ukraine. So, so, so it, it's a major uh, impact, but I think the main concern really is the prices of oil mm -hmm. uh, globally, which is a major shock in any economy um, in the world that relies on import of, uh, of oil, petroleum products. Uh, the, although now you would think it's a bit um, stabilized to around 100 or below 100, but I think we're still not out of the woods. And as long as the petroleum prices um, remain shaky because of the conflicts around the uh, around the world, I think we must be concerned that um, our economy uh, is likely to also uh, follow suit with what's happening in the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Uh, we shall be looking at that as well. Uh, but just to take you back to the stars of winding up on the, the paper review and the business daily, remember you're watching Sokoni here on uh, Morning Prime. Uh, that is of also great concern what is happening as far with, as the Chess Bank is concerned. Uh, where finally we have a, a verdict and people are bound to be going to the slammers or pay huge fines as it is. This is what is on the front page of the star. I was just picked on what Chibukati uh, was all about with the KPMG, uh, the teaser on top there, but the headline is all about Raila and Ruto, 60 hours of make or break. Paul's projecting a tight race. Winner will depend on turnout and decided voters. Mm -hmm. And we'll be looking at those particular uh, pollsters uh, that uh, yesterday gave their final verdict on who is the preferable presidential candidate which they are projecting as Raila Odinga in most of the polls that we saw yesterday. We shall just give you that much, much later. But just look how people also came out in force yesterday. This is uh, Western Kenya, uh, where we can see as the presidential candidate Raila Odinga during a rally at Buhungu uh, Stadium in Kakamega yesterday. And also, we had this particular picture, Deputy President, at Kerugwera Stadium in Kirinyaga yesterday as well. A swarm of Kenyans there, the thronged and must, of course, uh, you know, their entourage yesterday to just hear their last stump speeches, that is for both presidential candidates, uh, Right Honorable Raul Odinga and William Ruto, as it were, yesterday. So the polls is what you're going to be looking for. Suffering in drought? So it's not only the 4 million Kenyans who are facing this acute hunger. We have also the gravy uh, zebras and giraffes <laughs> and the jumbos <laughs> who are facing starvation. <laughs> you guys are laughing. This is not really a laughing matter. It is serious. Yeah? Right? The, yeah. the, the rare gravy uh, zebra and Somali giraffes are among uh, of the major wildlife facing death due to the drought. About mm -hmm. 80 elephants have died in Savo. Yeah. 80? Yeah. Wow. 
government tracking water and food. AT is a big, tidy, mm -hmm. eye-popping figure for elephants. Dominique says we should be eating them. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, <laughs> <serious> <laughs> no, Prof. Uh, uh, no, I, I appreciate that, and I totally, totally, totally agree with you. And it goes basic to uh, if you go to Savo when it was Savo, we never had those animals like, because there was water pond, everything there. Mm. And uh, to me, it's a very strange thing to do. Uh, I think the bottom line is how serious in the responsibilities we are given in the institutions we hold. Mm -hmm. And uh, even going to the first idea, I think this gentleman, uh, Shebakati, whatever his name is, I think he needs to take a break. I thank God he's not, I think he has finished his two terms or whatever. Mm -hmm. So he's not coming back. I, I think uh, if you, when you look at Kenya Wildlife Service, how do you ensure elephants, animals, and this, uh, it's interesting when you know, you predict, you know what is happening. Mm -hmm. and, and if you know what's happening, it's so sad if you're just you sitting there, nothing. like yes. a lay dark, and you yes. just, you just got, and you take uh, precautions. The issue you're raising here, we know as much as we might say, there's no recession, it's on the way. So what yeah. is this we need to do? How do we caution fuel prices? Mm -hmm. How do we caution <clears throat> food prices? So the issue of the elephants, the issue of the giraffes, so sad, mm. zebras, that... Uh, we're we, we just there. And uh, interesting that there have been times of plenty of rain. This is why we should have really got the, the national park. <coughs> get, <coughs> excuse me, getting into terms of how do you reinforce this by having water parts. Mm -hmm. I, I think to me is mm -hmm. not brainer. Mm -hmm. uh, you go to the rich country in, uh, in, in Africa, Botswana, mm -hmm. <coughs> excuse me, they're managing it well. Mm -hmm. And all this came because of the first president, yes. uh, which, uh, if you follow him through, he was very clear in terms of n no nonsense, in terms of corruption. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Uh, but something you raised on, I find it very... S I, I give you a responsibility like uh, KPMG, and you're the one busy in the newspaper. Why don't you sit down? The IDC and agree what needs to be done. But the other thing is, if we are not forthcoming yes. in giving information, mm -hmm. Then the, the Manahichi will look for other things, and the media and the others will come in. So there's a problem we have in terms of communicating. We are even government. Get out there, say what we are doing mm. in terms of to address what is addressing, uh, affecting the Kenyans. Right. And we have that, uh, that problem in terms of really getting out and seeing what you're doing. Busy saying there, yes, this route has been built by the government delivers, but it's our money at the end of the day. I don't say the government doesn't have any money. It's you and me, the part taxes we pay. Indeed. And we're just telling them, please use this tax appropriately. Indeed. Yeah. Right. This is what is on the front page of uh, the, the week. The, that is the week looking at Russia's charm offensive. Uh, is Putin a, a friend to Africa? That has been the probing question. We saw we had the, uh, the minister of uh, the foreign mm -hmm. minister, that is Lavrov, just at the neighboring mm -hmm. Uganda there. And uh, the problem in question has been, of course, this wheat grain. Uh, people have been asking, uh, when are they going to release, uh, of course, this particular bell of wheat to the world? And we saw there was a, a happy medium that came. The first uh, ship has docked at, uh, in Turkey Instant so far. Bull, yeah, yes. Istanbul. So is that also really bound to affect, you know, at the end of the day, the prices that uh, we do have here? Uh, if Russia right now, as we can see here, he's the one who has been holding the stakes as far as the export is concerned. And the question we should ask ourselves is, why did Lavrov chose to go to Uganda and not Kenya? Did our pronouncement earlier by the <laughs> diplomat of the UN really also instigate that, that now the perception is we are against Kenya's, primarily against what is really happening in Russia, and collectively as Africa, they've not been very, very forthwith in terms of the projection. We saw Ramaphosa saying they stand and they castigate, uh, they stand with Russia and they castigate uh, what is really happening as far as NATO is concerned. Any of you? Okay. Well, well, okay. Um, yeah, uh, Dibal, it's, uh, I'm, I'm looking at the reemergence of the Cold War. 
uh, with where Russia is now and a very aggressive China uh, trying to reassert themselves in the world stage. <laughs> Uh, and it is unfortunate that uh, if you look at that picture, yes, uh, Putin holding a, a few, uh, a few what, what do you call them? The, that's uh, shoots of uh, of wheat. Mm -hmm. uh, so if we can use wheat as a, as a bait to tell the Africans uh, we can feed you, but uh, you have to keep us. Uh, you have to support us, you have mm. to stop. Uh, uh, I, I like what the Kenyan said, uh, Bazita in the UN said, it, it, it pretty much said in Kenya and in Africa, we have, uh, we have this many tribes and they're in different countries. Uh, and if Kenyans, and, uh, Niger Kenyans, Ugandans and Tanzanians and Somalis and everybody else were to start fighting because you mm. have your kin on the other side, then the whole continent would be up uh, in, in smoke. Mm -hmm. So the fact that he, he chose to go to, to Uganda, mm -hmm. uh, that's probably their own calculations on where they probably will have better reception. Uh, <laughs> uh, and also Kenya probably, you, you never know in the background, he may have also wanted to come to Kenya as well, probably told, keep off, we have elections here. <laughs> Uh, but uh, but you, but you never know. But it's a shame that uh, what is happening in one country is mm. really, and that tells you how interconnected the global economy is. Mm, mm, mm. Uh, what happens in, in in Russia, in Ukraine, uh, affects the entire world uh, in terms of commodities, the fuel prices, and all these other things that happened. That that, that happened, and uh, and therefore, and I, uh, the other day I was discussing with a friend of mine, and we were discussing uh, Ukraine and what's happening. And I'm saying for the, uh, the, he was telling me for the first time, Africans are looking at white people fighting among themselves. Uh, and we've been looking at Africans mm -hmm. fighting among themselves for, for, for the longest time. And then somebody else mentioned uh, that uh, they were not happy when the refugees who are coming from, from Ukraine, Africans, are going to Poland and other countries and were not being let in. Uh, and therefore, uh, it's okay. Let the, let the white people fight, uh, fight, fight between themselves. Mm -hmm. But it's unfortunate that uh, what's happening in, 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 uh, in Ukraine is impacting on my livelihood here in this country. Uh, if you lo look at the cost of food, especially commodities in this country over the last several months, they have, the prices have gone up 13.2%. Uh, uh, those are, those are the really inflationary tendencies that we are looking at in, in terms of the pressure to the economy. Uh, if you look at the household goods, they have gone up about 9.2 percent. Mm -hmm. uh, fuel, about 7.1 percent. Uh, so household goods, almost 8 percent. Mm -hmm. So when you look at this trend uh, of, 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 of prices of essential goods and commodities across uh, the entire economic uh, spectrum, uh, you can see an inflationary tendency uh, creeping into the country. Uh, it is going to be upon us at some point. The question is, what are we going to do to tame the price uh, increases that we are, we are starting to, to, to see now? Mm -hmm. And I can tell you, as somebody who is in the, in the supermarket space, uh, we have no flour. People are lining up. It, it has resulted now to the Magendo uh, part of, uh, you go to Unga today, you're, you're lining up for like four or five hours mm -hmm. waiting for flour to go stock your supermarkets. Uh, sugar, there's no sugar. Mm. Kibra sugar is nowhere to be seen. And uh, so the question is, uh, we had sugar just a few months ago, where did it go today? So the, those are the things you, you have to ask yourselves. Are there other players in the background that are trying to frustrate the economy and, and then they release this immediately after, after the elections? Mm. Uh, during the election period, you have to ask all these questions. Uh, and some of them may not seem to make sense, but if you look at all this, chaos theory t teaches us that uh, within all the chaos, you observe some closely chaos, uh, and there will be an order somewhere. We just have to figure out where that order is. <laughs> chaos theory. I, 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 I'm not uh, Billy, sure whether... Yeah, Billy wanted to say uh, something. Yeah, Billy. On the rush, yeah, I, I think one thing that the probably Africa and many other parts of the world did not know uh, for a long time, and we've just you know, many of us have learned after the war, is that Russia is a superpower mm. in commodities. In commodities. It's, it's, it's in grains, yeah. it's in metals, iron and all steel. Mm -hmm. It's a superpower in energy, you know, in coal, in oil, in gas. 
uh, it's a superpower in in, 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 in you know in, in military so so I, I think um, in my view this, this this is really coming at a time when many of us brought up you know like Kenya which is always a Western um, uh, countries, you know, very close to Western countries, and this is probably the reason why they are not coming to Kenya, because Kenya has historically, even during the Cold War, has always been pro-West. Uh, and, and, and so I, I think, in my view, the reason why, again, Russia is trying to Africa is um, uh, because they have this conference, the, the Russia-Africa conference coming up in October. Mm -hmm. uh, you know now, Russia, uh, Africa has become the the marketplace for everyone. So the China, US, Japan, Africa, these annual conferences are always being held to try and woo, uh, you know, so that they can come and invest in Africa and try and trade with Africa. So Africa is a, you know, you're talking of billions of people who today are a marketplace. Um, not only marketplace, but also the resources, mm -hmm. the natural resources that are in many parts of Africa. So I think, um, um, you know, uh, after what has happened in the last decade or so, when many countries in Africa have seen that the East mm -hmm. actually is better than the West in terms of funding, in terms of mm -hmm. the loans that you have seen this country has taken, the investment yeah. that has come in from, you know. So I, I think Russia and others are also trying to come in and see, you know, that after all, uh, the West, America and Europe are not um, necessarily the main mm -hmm. uh, players in this continent and they want to also have their piece of cake. So I, I think, um, uh, of course, for, for us, our country, you know, as always, we are... Uh, pro West, so we don't. Um, when it comes to the crunch, we always lean closer to the. Are we really pro West? Uh, <laughs> oh, oh yeah, when it comes, comes, comes to the crunch, yeah. 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 <laughs> otherwise, uh, good times we are very much to But when it comes to the crunch, you know where our our yeah. loyalty lies. Yeah, we know where our butter is. Uh, nicely spread. Yeah, yeah. Iraqi is laughing. Well, this, this is an interesting mm -hmm. debate because uh, when I was an undergraduate student, a lot of my professors had gone to study in Russia, the old Soviet Union. But after the end of the Cold War, very few Kenyans go to Russia or even Ukraine mm -hmm. to study. Mm -hmm. So you, you, Russia has been having absence in Africa for the last 30 years. Yes. It is looking for a chance now to come back. They are very, uh, Russia is very active in directing some of the conflicts in North Africa, in the Sahel and so on. So uh, I think Russia is not just going to Ukraine. It's also trying to get influence in Africa. Mm -hmm. And it seems they are saying, wait a minute. Our influence has gone down. It's time to have new threads. And when there's a crisis at the Ukrainian war, you need threads from every side of the world, mm. whether it is Africa or not. And if you remember, apart from Kenya, very few African countries made any comment when Russia invaded Ukraine. Maybe they did not want to annoy President Putin. But I think that apart, I think Russia is trying to show the rest of the world that we are here. We can influence global issues. We can make countries think in a certain way or decide in a certain way. And I don't think it is just the visit of the foreign minister that we are concerned about. I think I'll, I see more Russian influence coming to Africa in the next few days. In the next few days. Yes, and then to, to add what my friend said about the shortage of flour, what did you expect? You cannot control the price of any commodity and expect no shortage. That was predictable, that was expected. And that is going to, go to, to continue. Mm -hmm. So let the market do its work. I don't know whether you want me to comment mm -hmm. about giraffes. When I go to, to Nairobi National Park, I think Kenyans, I don't know why we, are, we, we don't want to give credit where it is due. If you drive to Nairobi National Park, there are dams there and they have water. And uh, any time I drive there, I see animals congregating ab around those dams. So what we have done in Nairobi National Park, we can do in other parks. Let's have dams, the same way we have dams for, for human consumption, so that animals also have their, have their water. On recession, I think we are going to have a recession for a very simple reason. The governments are overreacting. You look at the Western government and most governments, they are increasing the interest rates. And I think they are increasing the interest rate too much to deal with inflation. And of course, you know what happens when you increase the interest rate. Mm -hmm. The demand goes down. So although Ukraine is a factor, although COVID is a factor, our human behavior might, o might, might also be a factor in bringing about recession by overreacting. All right. Thank you. Okay, uh, we're talking about the economy, and of course, uh, those are the cutaways that you can see there, uh, really, uh, the upcoming recession as well. That will be our biggest topic. But before we take a short break right now, we just want to show you what is on the front page of the Business Daily, and we'll come back with that particular uh, story as well. Uh, this has been ongoing, and I bet also 
uh, we had uh, Bilo Kero, when he used to be the chair of the Senate. I think uh, what is on the front page of our business daily this morning will interest you. Uh, this is Deloitte, which is being fined 2.1 billion shillings hidden hole in Chess Bank. And many of you were culprit of uh, Chess Bank uh, when we had a bank run there and you could not really get your money. This has been an ongoing uh, court case as it is right now. This is what is on the front page of a business daily. It's saying Deloitte find 2.1 billion shillings hidden hole in Chess Bank. Uh, Capital Markets Authority finds Deloitte 10 million shillings over inflated accounts. Uh, farm face is back prop due to losses from 4.8 billion shillings bond and you can follow the story on page two of the business daily as well then there is also the flip-flop policy on tea machines which is iking multinationals right we have the politicians on the ground right now this has become a very catnip issue with the politicians uh, on whether they should we should go the most mechanized way of picking the tea leaves or still try and retain jobs so that, uh, yes, uh, we have also political experience at the end of the day. But in reality, people are going the, the mechanized way as it is right now. This is what is on the front page of a business daily. We take a short break right now. When we come back, we discuss intensively and massively looking at Just Bank and the final decision, uh, of course, that has been put forth.